see conspiracies. Just basically, uh, it's not going to be a super long one, I don't think, tonight. Just wanted to uh, check in. I know I've been kind of like MIA recently. It's a lot going on with um, traveling, Axial Fest, all of that. But there's some cool news and thought, you know what? Hey, I'm actually traveling again. I'm in a hotel room in Washington, D.C. So, uh, yeah. It says nobody's watching. It's not... It's not keeping up, but I see people in the chat. How's it going? Deep Fried RCs, Foam Boy RC, Sean's RC Adventures, Monster Jam Fans, Germany. Uh, Tim Vanison was in earlier. And I think, I think we're live. But yeah, it's been crazy busy. Um, Lauren is here, RC Mass Master. Uh, Kevin Gibbs, welcome guys. Going to talk a little bit about the RC four wheel drive, the new solid axle monster truck that I did not see coming. Came out of left field, got a text message from Green Frog RC when I was at Axial Fest, and I stopped to look at it, watch the video. Pretty epic. Pretty epic. So um, I'm just making sure it's everything's working here live. Make sure it's all good. Hertz RC, John, Brandon's RC. What's going on, you guys? Uh, Scale Builders Guild is doing his photo editing live, too, right now. That's some good stuff. So, um, yeah, so this past weekend, I was at um, Axial Fest Badlands uh, 2020. Awesome event. Got more videos coming for you guys. And uh, actually have them kind of queued up here as well. Maybe we can take a peek through some of that stuff. Show you guys what we've got for you here. Um, I do have a little bit of the footage logged in here. Some of the, the real scales, one-to-one <laughs> -one stuff we did. Climbing these hills and all that. Um, and also some of the uh the small scale stuff got lots of footage here on the left had a bummer of day three here these are supposed to be interviews um i think this one is brian from big squid and this one is paul from proline and you can see what happened also bucks rc world i interviewed him and it did the same thing so about 20 files on this memory card just got jacked up uh, turns out there's a recall on these memory cards. They're like expensive Sony ones, and uh, <laughs> they're supposed to be made for recording 4K um, at 10 bit. I wasn't even doing that, but um, yeah, it just it killed these files. I think you guys might remember I had another video that that happened, and I thought it was the camera. Turns out it's actually the um, the memory cards that are bad and uh, have been recalled. So. Um, I, I'm trying to save it. I've at least got audio for it, those interviews that I can try and bring in with maybe some other imagery over it. Um, and they actually play back when I go to Finder. I can actually get them to, um, to play a little bit. It's really choppy. I don't know what is going on. I tried repairing them, spent money. But if I open them like in QuickTime... It'll actually show that I did the recording. It was recording, but it's really choppy. So I'm really bummed about that. But anyway, sorry, guys. That's a little extra tidbit info at the beginning here. Give people time to jump in. I am tired. Um, somebody asked Kevin Gibbs, says I look tired. I am tired. Part of it's the lighting in here. It's awful. Um, all I've got are these really little strip led lights that go down on the table but yeah um yeah some of you guys are congratulating me i did take first place in the um the 2.2 uh open class for the rock racing which was pretty awesome so that allowed the 2.2 tires and then it was open as to whatever electronics the stock class just meant brushed that one my motor got all cogged up with mud and didn't run so Hey, how's it going, Claude Busted? Raymond Miller, a bunch of people in here now jumping in. Cool. Um, 
Raymond Miller says, hey, Indiana, yes, RC Mass Master. Did I see anything new at Axial Fest? Uh, other than the RC four-wheel drive that hit, um, no. No, oh, well, there was the um, – yeah, you guys have already all been talking about it. I'm just catching up because, like, internet was garbage on the phones there. I tried to go live a couple times. People wanted me to go live, and it just – it was no go. I tried, and uh, – <laughs> It was that's the one bad thing about there. I, I might try and get some other kind of phone um, coverage like Verizon or something that would maybe let me go live. But um, yeah, Tim says uh, the footage with me and Jeremy crawling was great. I've got a lot more of that. I've got some great video um, as well of the uh, the SCX twenty four course here um I'll show you guys a little bit give you guys a sneak peek here on the front end um but yeah so the scx 24 stuff was down here they had a really cool course but this these things look awesome but they're the 24 scale and this course that they had set up was so epic for this scale of a truck that you would think we were looking at 10th scale trucks. Um, it was just the perfect type of terrain. Now this is all log footage, which means I have to add the color to it later. Um, but look at that scale rocks and everything looks super cool. But the terrain for the whole hill was perfectly scale like that. And I have some iPhone footage that shows it a little bit better probably. Uh, with the SCX24, there you can see the terrain going off to the background. Perfect little bumps and drop-offs and all that stuff for them. And that was the end of that shot. Um, as you guys are saying, we did hit the uh, trails with the – you guys haven't seen all these yet – but with the uh, the Jeep and took it through the tunnels, which is really fun and really cramped, tight fit. So I'll have some of that in there. I've actually got the second video is half edited um, down here with footage. Uh, John Martin, JMRCs is there. That's his... Uh, old green truck right there uh, and then another guy chris was hanging out with us he was camped next to us and so he followed i'll tell you the scx um the scx 10-3 is an amazing truck that's the real one i was talking about the real scale stuff but this thing with that axe system in it was absolutely an amazing runner i like these small tires on it too it just everything felt really good about it um, although I did have some glitchy, which glitchiness, which could have been due to maybe my solder going bad, but it kind of drove off on its own there at the end. So I have some inspecting to do on that truck <laughs> because it, it just started, it, it literally drove off of one of the cliffs. Uh, now when I say cliff is like five feet down or something onto the cement or the rock. So that was crazy. Um, J-O-R-C, man, thank you. Super chat. Just saw you jump in here. Thank you. Maybe we'll pull that up. I do have the footage of that race. Um, Cody, I'm not home yet. I was home for, well, it was a 15-hour drive with the RV. It sucked. Um, one of the worst drives I've ever had. It, it, everything went well, but it's when you're driving a big RV, especially towing the Jeep, you're driving the whole time because you're trying to keep it in the lanes. You're basically a billboard. The wind hits you and you're constantly driving. So it's very stressful and um, nerve wracking 15 hour drive. I normally try to top out at eight hours, but that didn't happen. Um, elbow cough, elbow cough. Missed something. Um, Deep Fried RC is new to monster trucks. Would you recommend the Axial SMT 10, Sen Racing, or Red Cat Ground Pounder? 
Uh, I've had them all. I like them all. They're all different. The ground pounder gives you kind of a cool, uh, really cheap four steer if you like that. SMT 10 is just so many options and upgrades for it. It's tough to beat um, for a starter, especially now with the new gears and everything in it. Um, I really like the Sen. It's smaller, though, so uh, more shocks. It's a little bouncier out of the box, but it feels very scale in the way that it performs. I, I really like it for, like, little freestyle and stuff. Um, but the SMT 10 is the most probably capable out of the bunch if you want to get it racing. Um, where's the, some channel? Where's the low C SMT 10 they teased with that one question? I don't know. I, I'm still shocked that we're here talking about um, an RC four-wheel driver. We will be, and not the low C. I left field, man. I did not see that coming. I know that they made parts for monster trucks way back when, but I didn't foresee them coming out with a ready to run. That's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I'm going way back into the comments here. Sorry. Uh, I got further further back than I meant to. Um, see, uh, somebody's checking out later. Gabriel. Oh, Bar uh, Basher Boy. See you, man. Um, but, yeah, 15 hours is pretty rough. Um, Kevin Gibbs, that's the, the Senate is an awesome basement truck. It would definitely be that. Cody Vandenberg, did I find my GoPro? Okay, so that's um, – I met Cody there, saw him. He was actually wearing an RC Conspiracy shirt, which was wild. It's still weird seeing people wearing stuff like that out, out and about. But, yeah, so, um, you know, uh, Bill, uh, I think you guys call him Long Sock McGee or something. He found it when he was tearing down the trails. And so he lives in Fredericksburg, which is actually, I, I'm only probably an hour from there right now in DC, but he's going to drop it in the mail for me. So in his, in true fashion, he, uh, he messaged me. Everything's kind of like, he does things in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. He's very good at it. Um, it's kind of his stick in a way, which he did to me as well, because I can get into that story. Uh, because I, I, ste I stepped out of the donut, they called it, for racing, where you had to stay in the little donut they made or the little boundary that they made, and I accidentally stepped out of it while we were racing. Um, and so, you know, he definitely made a point of pointing me out and making me feel very small. <laughs> anyway, uh, same kind of deal with the GoPro um, asking if I, if I left anything at Axial Fest, and I told him, then he asked if I was in Michigan, and so he'd apparently gone through and like seen where I'd been and was looking at the footage and was asking very specific questions. Very funny stuff, but he did find it. He didn't find my sunglasses, but he found my GoPro. Uh, he must think I'm like a total of – my brother used to call me a mimbo uh, for like a male bimbo back in high school. He must totally think I'm a mimbo because uh, I stepped out of his little box uh, during the racing – he found my GoPro and he saw my truck in the GoPro footage. So he knew that I was the guy that he made, you know, kind of the fool out of moving my truck and turning it backwards and putting it like way off the start line. Anyway, that's a quick story about that. But yes, he did. He messaged me yesterday and let me know. It was a tough trip for me, guys. So I lost the GoPro, lost my sunglasses I got a year ago in, in Hawaii. Um, and then, uh, the, the, got my Jeep stuck in the mud in Michigan. Um, that was pretty, pretty tough. Uh, had to walk back to the, like the, the front of the park. Cause we were like the only ones, barely anybody there. We were still on the outer ring road when we got stuck. Um, but it was an easy walk back. But, yeah, I had to find somebody to call and come tow us out and all that. Anyway, it's embarrassing there, too. But uh, the um, the trails that they put together at Axial Fest were great. Uh, definitely will go back. Uh, very well run event. Um, and you just have fun RCing the whole time. Like, you don't have to do any of the competitions. It's just 
just fun. I totally would recommend it just to go and hang out. Um, Dominic Kaczynski, did I build that box yet for the backflip ramp? I have not. I have not been home to do it. I did kill all the weeds on the jumps. I sprayed them, and they are all gone when I came home. But I came home, our HVAC upstairs wasn't working, so it was like 90-some degrees up there, super hot. We all slept downstairs after that 15-hour drive on couches and whatever we could find <laughs> where it was cool. Uh, and then I disconnected the Jeep from the mini uh, from the RV, and there were no brakes at all. Pedal to the floor. Um, had to have it towed to uh, repair shop, which is good because I got to find a cool uh, repair shop. That's a you know an off road type shop as well, like accessory shop. So they're going to be doing some extra stuff for me while it's there. So you know the. Uh, the cross member like under the transmission is just it's beat to hell. So they're gonna get me a stronger one. <laughs> one of those. Uh man, we haven't talked to our C4 wheel drive yet. We'll talk, we'll get to that in a second. Um Axel Fest, anyone have any questions about that before we move on? But Dominic, no, I haven't had time for the backflip ramp yet. Uh Tim says he's 16 year retired commercial truck driver. Try heavy haul, 103,000 pounds through. Oh my gosh. So I'm curious, Tim, you might know. Like, I'm what so the brake on my Jeep, the front passenger, the caliper, when we actually figured out was like on top of the uh, the disc, it wasn't where it's supposed to be. Lost the brake pads, lost the ABS sensor tore up the brake line. So I have to have all that redone. Um, and I'm wondering if it was braking too hard. I, had, I just had the brakes installed on it so that it would brake assist behind the RV. I'm wondering if it was pulling braking too hard where it was almost trying to stop the RV as well. Like if the RV wasn't braking as hard, but the Jeep was like in full on brake mode trying to, trying to stop. I wonder, I don't know. Anyway, jacked up the brakes uh but green frog did send me the message and i thanked him for it about uh the the other thing that we'll be talking about which is the rc four-wheel drive carbon assault so let's do that for a minute let's get through this so we can talk about whatever sean's rc adventure says yeah i think uh it's USTE the Axial Fest for next year. Yeah, I mean it was epic, guys. Um, Horizon put on a good show. Uh, Kevin Gibbs, you're having storms, man. I hear it, man. There was some big thunder and stuff going on out here when I was come back from dinner. Not fun in DC traffic. Uh, Cody says he went out of order in the TTC. Did he make a, a show of you, Cody, when you did that? Did you get yelled at? Um, the right one says that he bought his son his first RC truck in armored granite and he already broke it. Ah. Oh man. Travis Paul, is Losey really coming out with something? Dude, they said they're going to. They better at this point. So, Cody, yes, the GoPro has been found. It's getting mailed back to me, which is awesome because it has a lot of our trail footage on it. Um, yeah. Innovation RC, what is going on? So, yeah, this is it, guys. The RC four-wheel drive carbon assault one-tenth monster truck with Manticore Lexan body set for 750 bucks. That is a steep price in this day and age for a 10th scale ready to run truck that is brushed. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so, well, yeah, we'll get, we'll get into some of my thoughts on that. Uh, being a big fan of free sale RC stuff, I kind of wonder at 750, you know, you could have a chassis and awesome axles casings um almost from rc or from freestyle rc 
uh, because you're going to want to be changing out electronics and stuff in this. And so the price is going to go up. You'll probably be sitting at about a grand on this when you have it really uh, set up to race, which is, I think, what they intended to be used for because it's a carbon fiber chassis. Um, yeah. So. I, so the right one says they need to sell just a roller without the body. Yeah, they would offer a little bit of savings if it was a roller without the body. Now, we will talk. It does have some nice upgrades to it um, that put the pricing where it's at. Because if you were to buy this stuff from RC four-wheel drive, you know, it's not cheap stuff. Uh, as far as like their wheels, tires, uh, the King shocks, stuff like that, that it comes with. King shocks are not cheap. <laughs> I have them on my 2.2 racer that we'll show later. And uh, they're not cheap. So there's some money there. It just, it, you know, you just start it in your mind. You just start adding it up. And that's where a lot of the cost is. Um, I, I do like the chassis. Um, I like what they did with the build on that. I'm going to try and zoom in here some. Get me out of the shot. <laughs> Sean's RC Adventures. Does it have to me a battery connectors? <laughs> I don't know. Um, my mouse is frozen. Here it goes. It comes with a nickel metal hydride battery. So, I mean, it's fully ready to run. There's batteries for the controller. Um, it has the D44 front and rear axles. And we'll look at those because those are... Those are made out of metal. They're machined, so that's nice. Um, at least the the tubes. Um, comes in the 540 brush 27 turn motor, which isn't very fast. They've got lower turn motors. I don't know, maybe because they think people go three cell with it. Um, it's got King Off-Road Racing dual spring shocks, which are nice. Uh, axle mounted twister high torque servo. Um, yeah, you guys can read all this stuff. The body doesn't do anything for me. It's orange. That's kind of cool. But other than that, it doesn't really do anything for me. The chassis is all right. The axles look okay to me. Uh, but they also opted for a two speed transmission, which, if I am correct, I think that is not allowed in racing. So there's that question mark. I'm not sure that in our race leagues that we're allowed to have a two-speed transmission. So that limits it there as far as audience. What's going on, Freestyle RC? Josh, we're just talking about you. And also, Josh, I, I need to talk to you guys. I'm trying to figure out if I can find a way to get up to your event at the end of the, at the, end of the month. Um, but I was just kind of saying that at this kind of price point, I would be more likely to buy freestyle RC axles and chassis and get ready to do like a full on indestructible build at that point. Um, but I'm somebody who has tires and wheels and all that stuff that I can just slap on. Um, I do like their axles though. They do look scale. So there's that. We'll, we'll keep going. Chassis is okay. They give you a couple of mounting options um, down low on the chassis as well as for going. That's for like the trailing arm uh, suspension. Um, and they've got them up top as well. So you could do on axle it looks like. Which is how they have it set up. Um, I guess the lower spot would actually be those holes would probably be more for their sway bars. So it does come with sway bars. Uh, front and rear. Thank you, somebody, for doing front and rear on an RTR for us. Tim Vanison, it's orange. Harley Designs would love it. <laughs> yes. Whoops. Hua. -ah. He would like that. RC Massmaster, what is Manicor Alexan? That's the name of the truck, is the Manicor, I think. No, it's the carbon assault. I don't know what Manicore is. I 
We'll have to look. Maybe it says somewhere. Um, I'm just looking at pictures, though, <laughs> mainly. It does have beadlock wheels. I know a lot of people like those RC four-wheel drive beadlock wheels. They can be hard to come by, and this comes with them, so that's nice. Uh, it is a lot of screwing to do. That is one thing I do know. So they're 32P, 32-pitch uh, steel pinion, Delrin spur gear, which is nice. Um, Four-to-one ratio, two-speed. And that gives you the ratios for that as well. But looking down here, we'll get into what is more interesting to me is the axles. And so it's got these trusses and then these tubes are out of metal. <clears throat> I think they're out of aluminum trusses and um, the tubes, but it's got plastic ends uh for you like, like your hub and hub carriers uh, and then also for your actual diff or plastic but i mean it looks overall like a well-built truck but I, I question the two speed if that's allowed in racing or not i don't know maybe freestyle rc can say whether or not it's in his rules or not And what they allow? Do they allow two speed in their uh, rules? Travis Paul says, I can make it. Oh, I know what he means. I can make it to the event. That's what he means. I can make it. I'm trying. I found an airport that Delta flies into there. So that's not too far away. Noise Fast RC. You bought. Aluminum force aluminum wheels from Sen, American force aluminum wheels from Sen, and they didn't come with the aluminum wheel lugs. Where could you get them? Uh, I would look on the Sen American website and see they've got a lot of parts listed there. That would be the best place, I think, that, to look. Careful Cole says these are like SSD axles. Yes. Okay. Freestyle RC says two speed is okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. I don't know that I would use it. I have enough range on the single speed on mine <laughs> that it's out of control at that point anyway. So get enough power down. But yeah, so you can see here where it's taken apart. They're uh, CNC axle trusses and aluminum axle tubes. And then those bolt up to the plastic C hubs and uh, diff case. And then it's got plastic drive shafts in the center with the metal yokes to them, metal U joints. But here's the chassis the chassis does look good to me. I like that they've added the, the metal bracing where you do put your shocks and stuff in. I think that's nice um, into the carbon there just for extra durability, thickens it up a bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's not that bad looking to me. It's definitely uh, very angular cut but nice metal bracing on the bottom. And it looks like as well as it looks like a metal plate across the middle as well. I can't tell. It does look metal there. But overall you get the metal links. Um, you get the metal sway bars, which are decent looking. It, it looks well put together. Um, the electronics, meh. It does look like they're XT60s, though, Sean's RC Adventures. Okay, Tim Vanison. Manicore is the polycarbonate hardener that binds it all together in the molding process. There we go. This is good information. 
but it does. I mean, King Shocks, you know, they're those are well, I, I lost the metal bottom retainer for the spring that sucks though it does go on and if you don't have them preloaded enough they they will pop off so i gotta find out if i can get more of those um but you know the trailing arms aren't super scale looking they'll be super durable they allow to have sway bar added there i wish there was a way that it could have gone to the axle instead um of having the trailing arm. I don't know that there's mounts. It looks like there's a mount in front of the shock that you could potentially do it and flip it. If you wanted to do like a delete on those and make it a look a little bit more scale with um, the four link versus the trailing arm. I don't know. What do you guys think? 750? It looks big. That's the other thing, the width of it. Look at those axles, how wide they are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's, uh, it's a big-looking truck. Uh, put the Cloud Buster body on it. Going to be epic. All right. There you go. Did we get a price yet? I never looked on the site for the pre-order. General Hobbies, it is $750 for it. Again, Metal Gears. Metal axle tubes, metal trusses, king shocks, two-speed transmission, carbon fiber, and then it's got all that that aluminum bracing and, and plating as well for, like, the um, transmission mount as well as looks like the battery tray and all that. That looks to me like it's aluminum up here. That's yeah, seven hundred and fifty bucks. So if you were to buy an SMT ten, it's three hundred, let's say three hundred bucks. You got a good deal on it. Um and you put in bigger wheels, two point six wheels like these. It's another hundred and twenty, so now you're at four twenty. Uh, you do, uh, metal lower links or trailing arms. Even if you do vanquish ones, you're looking at 80 bucks, something like that. So now you're about 500 bucks. They have metal upper links, say 30 to 40. So 540, um, you're going to do beef tubes in the axles. So that would put you, if you did the real beef tubes, that's another 70 bucks. Now you're up to upwards of 600. Um, if you did upgraded shocks or even the king shocks, you're looking at 120 bucks. So, I mean, you can see where the cost is. Plus, this is a carbon fiber chassis to begin with. So if you bought an aftermarket chassis, you're looking at 250 upwards. So that's where the money is if you just kind of add it all up. Um, that's not even talking about upgrading your electronics on the uh, on the other ones. So I can see it. Doesn't make it easier to swallow. It's a lot harder when you think of it that way. Here you can see the options for doing the uh, the shocks mounting options, whether it's on axle or on the trailing arm. And the skid plate out of the aluminum. So yeah, full bake altered all our seats. I still want the pulling sled for $500, me too. <laughs> Someone said, waiting for the second stimulus check. They can get it. Jack Henderson, 750's nuts. Yeah, I mean, you, you can add it up and you can see it. But if you would change out, if you're thinking you're going to 
change out certain things on there that you don't like, then it may or may not be worth it. If you're thinking, well, I don't want those trailing arms, those metal ones, I want different ones or whatever, then, then it might not be worth it. But you're getting quite a few upgraded parts there. I don't know anything about these axles and if they'll hold up to anything or their transmissions. Um, uh, is the D is our D forty four diffs and all that tough? Part support. That's the other question. But I mean, it looks like what people try and turn their trucks into after they've had them. They buy the SMT ten, and then before you know it, it doesn't have the stock chassis, doesn't have the plastic arms anymore has, you know, metal upgraded freestyle RC, uh, sway bars, um, transmissions, whatever, you know, they put the RC four wheel drive transmission and that's the one fail I think for it, right? Cause freestyle or RC four wheel drive has a scale transmission. I wonder why they didn't opt for that instead. It's like a $110 transmission. What do you guys think that that and it's scale looking? XR3 radio. Don't know anything about that. Mm, over 300 ounces of torque. I don't know anything about their servos, but it just kind of looks like one of those. Power HD ones that has been rebranded, which are good, but they're not super expensive. The body would have to go. Or if it comes clear like that, then we're talking. But yeah, it's got a bunch of stuff. There's optional parts here that they're showing for it. They can get heavy duty bevel gear sets. So it's making me think that it doesn't have heavy duty gears in it. And so you'll still be looking to upload, update those like you would with the, um, the axial ones. So that's kind of my thought on that. That's one of the new things. The other new thing was the Enduro 24. You guys probably saw this. Um, as well, this was cool. Um, I think it was uh, RC Trail Critter that sent me the link to this when it came out. And uh, I immediately thought of the RGT because it kind of looked like it with the wheels or the tires and then the front mounted motor and um, servo. Which it looks like. It looks like a rebrand to me. Uh, it comes with an extra body. Doesn't actually come with that extra body. Trailing arms, pusher shafts. Mm, I don't think it does come with the extra body but if it came clear and you got to paint it yourself that'd be pretty cool maybe it does i don't know with the cheaper electronics rtr i don't want one that's just so it drives tim that's why they do that um because you're you're into it it just in parts 700 dollars carbon fiber chassis metal throughout the bigger tires, the nice uh, wheels that they've got, beadlock wheels, um, metal trailing arms, king shocks. You're already in it for the amount that they're selling it for. So those are kind of almost freebies with the electronics uh, just so that you can drive it until you put in your nicer ones that you want. I, that's what I think. That happens with a lot of ready to runs so. though. Um, so going back, the Enduro, 
Um, I was just kind of looking through at some of the pictures of it here. This is the one that caught my attention right here. Uh, and if you look at the RGT setup with the uh, like transfer case off the transmission there, it looks very similar. Even the tires look pretty similar. The wheels are different, but that's not bad. This is these are really good little trucks. Um, you can see the tread pattern here with the little. It looks pretty similar. If you keep your eye on that for a second. And then we go to that. Looks pretty close. But still, I don't think, you know, it's not coming from China. So it's $80 coming from China, free shipping. You can get this one quick. Um, you get it with the U.S. warranty and stuff through Element. I think the twenty dollars is there. Um, their wheels look nice. I think they're nicer looking. Um, I don't love the paint jobs on the bodies. Hopefully, they'll have a clear option for those. Not. I don't know. Just a little too out there for me. I like my trucks to be kind of plain solid colors <laughs> but you know there's people that'll like it i think the price point's right and having seen these like kevin talbot's done stuff with these this is that rgt like land rover that he has that i think was one of his favorites um so yeah Travis Prawl says it's not a bad price, and he's talking back about the RC four-wheel drive carbon assault. I agree. For giving somebody something out of the box that they can just put new electronics in and have a pretty beefy-looking truck, I think it's not bad. The other ones you have to do a lot of work for. Um, I would still opt for getting a, a ZRD, though. <laughs> if I'm going to race, if I'm going to get a race truck, that's what I would go for. Um, yeah, it is getting close to X Max price range, and it's not going to give you X Max performance. It's a different truck, but you're talking scales. But this has so much metal in it, it's carbon fiber. The X Max is just all plastic. That's where the difference is there. Um, and these aren't meant to perform like the X Max either. And that you're paying for size and just power. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I I have to hand it to him. I think it's a cool attempt like that we haven't seen as far as a ready-to-run monster truck that's kind of, kind of equipped out already for you. Metal, carbon fiber. It's kind of everything we do to the plastic ones. They've already done it for you. And uh, with the bodies, that's those get swapped out anyway um, by most monster truck people. And so why why go out of their way to try and license something when people are just not going to want to have the same one that everybody that got the ready to run has? That's my thought on it. Um, my buddy just built it to be a scale race semi kit looks awesome. So that's another thing we can talk about. I'll try and find something to pull up here, but the J concepts, um, chassis is now out the regulator. That's going to forget the name of it. Uh, I just want to say raminator, but it's not the raminator. It's a regulator and I have one and I got it. Um, when they first came out, but I was in Michigan and I don't have any of my Claude stuff with me. So that's one of the first things I want to work on when I get home is building that out. Travis Paul, thanks, man. <laughs> that does help. You trying to get me there? General Hobbies, we put styrene bodies on it. 
The axles look thin when you look at it from the front. I agree. But we'll see. They are aluminum. I'm, I'm guessing that they tested that stuff out. Some of that stuff's been used before by them. So, so J.O. says he really likes it. I, I agree. For the first MT, I think it's pretty cool. What I can't wait to see is some run footage of it really going. Um, but, yeah. Garrett Bedell, why can't I comment and watch you guys? Do I have to go to Facebook or something? Um Yeah, you can watch it right here, man. And Facebook, it should be playing live and commenting. <laughs> Free seller, see up the ascent. Thanks, man. Yeah, so I, th I think I have some flyer miles and stuff like that that I haven't used that I hopefully can use to get up there. So we'll see. I need to check the dates. I know it's coming up here in just like 10 days, so it'll be quick turnaround. But I'll be in, in contact with you guys when I uh, when I get home. Maybe tomorrow or something. I'll give you a, a call. I got my three hour drive home after my interview thing up here. Really curious what bearings used on those thin axles. I don't think they're that thin. I think that they're just wider than you think. I think they're still decent size too. Um, but yeah, the regulator, some people have been, I've, I've seen very little footage of it. I know it's there, um, but because I haven't had internet for the last week or so, um, I've, I've missed most of what everybody's doing. There's so much cool stuff going on with the regulator chassis and whatnot, man, solid Axle Monster Mayhem has a really cool looking chassis up on the top pick there. Carbon fiber ZRD. You guys can't see it. Check that out. Beautiful. That's my kind of style look, though. I love it. So I was trying to look here real quick, see if we can get like a video of a uh, regulator or something running. Um, because I've seen some that look pretty good already. Michael McKenzie had his going. Matthew all has been posted up some crazy stuff. He's got, he's got a lot of projects he's working on. Cool. Uh, free cell RC chassis. They made up for him. A ZEI, I think. Or what? Stuff for sale. Man, I'm going far. There's been a lot of stuff going on since those came out. You guys aren't a part of this group and you like monster trucks, this is the place to be. So, again, here, this SCS right there, that's the RC four wheel drive transmission. And I don't know why they don't have that included in that truck instead. That's the Freestyle RC transmission. Those things are really boss. I'd say that if they were in the chat or not. I've been chasing down their stuff for years. Man, man I just have to search Michael McKenzie. This is insane. Just show us the footage. That's a sweet leaf truck. Retro. Everyone's talking about the RC four wheel drive. Here, let's uh, save you guys for the scroll one for a second. But um, what do you guys want to talk about? I've got the I've got footage from Axial Fest. I can show you guys some of. Hopefully, I'll have some stuff from the Freestyle RC 
event as well. I want to race monster trucks. That's the main thing. I haven't really gotten to. All right, there's his up and running. So I'll make sure I find a video though. There's photos of his regulator. Oh no, here's video. Sweet. I got it. Now I can go back. Um, JMRC, how's it going, John Martin? We talked about you earlier. Whoa, I didn't know that about Seder Rodas. General Hobbies, that's crazy, man. Pascal. Trail Crit RC, the low C laser not U4 four wheel drive rock racer. Maybe why the bomber was dumbed down. The what? Low C laser nut. I thought we were talking about the low C laser nut back with the the goat. JMRC, I went there and the folder was empty that you sent me. I'll I'll message you after this. Um, I don't know if I went to the right folder. Yeah, so this is the regulator chassis that he built. Um, it's from J Concepts. Makes layout and stuff easy. Stock wheel base, but they were just. Jason was doing so awesome with this rig, um, and they're behind the actual steering. I love the bounce that it has. It looks just fantastic to me. It's how I like mine to run. But yeah, so I have one of these to build, get hooked up, get some motors going. What did you say? Low C? Low C laser nut. Competition X RC crawler dot com. Huh. Okay. Not sure where this picture came from, but it appears Losi is jumping into the 2.2 Unlimited Rock Racer scene with the Laser Nut U4. Interesting. Fully independent suspension. Uh, based on the picture, they're saying it's the low C10 design. Hmm. They think it'll come with the Spectrum setup. Oh, it says it underneath it. Smart 130 amp brushless ESC. So it's in some magazine, it looks like. Okay. So we thought that this laser nut, I think we were Googling this with Axial back in the day for the cap or the goat, because they had it at their last event. Like this one at Axial Racing. Huh. I mean, they have different iterations of it, I guess. Yeah, so these are like a f independent suspension. So that would be scale for that design. Um, Blue and black colors. 
they have it listed at low C. So 2.2, does that make it bigger tires than the DB Pro? Much bigger tires. Interesting. Has anybody else talked about this? Pretty petty copper wheels. Driver figures. Huh. Supposed to be based off of the real one to one laser nut. So it's Tenacity Locomotive 282 saying it's a Tenacity DB Pro with bigger motor and 2.2 wheels. This was expected for a while. I saw the laser on Harley Scale News update. Okay. Ah, the laser locomotive. That's the new tenacity based monster truck swampers different independent suspension <laughs> jo all right uh what's my favorite full-size monster truck said blitz is saying son of a digger for sure. The way that thing handles gets all wicked and twists. I love it. Uh, more Axial Fest footage for sure. That's coming. Seb Blitz is a huge monster truck fan. Very cool, man. That thing shines and comes out of the box. Yeah, man. All right, so <clears throat> this is news to me. They didn't talk anything about this this past weekend, and they had trucks like these out there. They had a U4 truck out in front of the Horizon 10. It wasn't a laser nut, though. The guy from King of Hammers was there. Hmm. It says retail is 549. Map is 479. I think I'm reading on there, right in here. Zoom in on it. Whoa, there's big now. Yeah, 549 retail, 479 map. Designed to be the ultimate U4 racer. Huh. Aluminum shocks, sway bars, adjustable turnbuckles, full metric hardware package. The laser nut is currently the only complete unlimited U4 fully independent suspension racer on the market. And that's all we can read. I'm curious what that'll look like stacked up next to a Tenacity DB Pro. Got that extra wheel on the back. That's sweet. Does anyone know where this picture originated? Are they the first ones to post it? July 14th. That was six days ago that was posted there. Seven days ago it was on RC Crawler. Oh, that shows more. Locomotive, I probably get one, but I hate the laser nut name. Harley Road in the real one. Driver staying control with AVC, DX3 transmitter. VF Goodrich tires.
You can see a little bit more on here. Looks like a rock ray chassis and cage. Let me see. Tenacity DB. I think it looks like the Tenacity DB. So there's the laser nut. Real one. Okay. Huh. I think it's this top secret project. That ad is from the Transmitter Magazine Horizons quarterly publication. But I just got the Transmitter Magazine and I didn't see it in there. <laughs> Seb, yeah, DB stands for Dune Buggy. Okay, so that's the new look of it. So that's the blue. Man, that's a wicked shot. It's not easy to get it set up like that and then get out and take a picture like RFCs, I'm sure. Huh. Okay. So, you guys RC conspiracy me tonight. Speculation. Okay, so he was saying at Vanquish... He was speculating something back in January. With laser nut. Hmm. And I here I was thinking that was going to be the Capra. You guys remember me pulling up those pictures from uh, Axial Fest and the laser nut was there? Uh, Siblis, is there an RC mud truck available on the market, or do you have to make one? Uh, get an SMT tent and put mud wheels on it. That's the way to do it. Easy swap. Emergency break, general hobbies. <laughs> yeah, get that shot. That's the other thing I haven't worked on is my emergency break, handbrake on my uh, Jeep while it's uh, being worked on. Okay. Laser nut. So when is that coming out? Do, do, do. Does it say when it's released? I don't say. Driver fears. Okay, doesn't say. Okay, Geo City hit mask. He learned about laser night and transmitter. Okay. Well, I just got the latest transmitter and I didn't see it in there. I didn't didn't look that hard through it. I haven't read all the articles yet, but that's good. Um, so you, so uh, Jay wanted to hear about the racing. Go back to what his comment was because it's really funny. Although I just want to keep searching all this stuff. <laughs> just want to keep searching it. Tell us about the victory, bro. The champagne, the trophy girls, the crazy after party. What was it like? <laughs> um, it was day three, iPhone. It was cramped quarters. So I told you guys about the donut. Right up here where I'm circling is the donut. You've got to stand in. So as much as people were kind of distancing themselves socially, this was one opportunity where it didn't happen very well. Um, people that were really worried about it had masks on. But as you can see, most people for the most part, stead away from each other unless they were like with the person. 
and you saw that all weekend um, that there were groups and you'd, you'd stand close to people you knew, but anybody else you kind of kept your distance from, uh, or you had, you could buy something like this, uh, Axial branded thing. I had my other ones as well. Still have it in my pocket. They could just pop on if you're going to go talk to somebody or whatever. Um, so where's the race? Where's my race? I think this is it. If it is, I'll blow it up full screen. This is it. I hung back at the beginning. So the problem is I'll kind of cock through it as it goes. How's that? If you guys like that. Um, after party was pretty cool. They gave a ton of stuff away. A lot of SCX 10 threes, kits, ready to runs, Capra's big, huge coolers. Um, so much stuff they gave away. I mean, the giveaway time was just on, almost unending. Could have just get the bomber RTR. I have the bomber RTR and it's awesome. I'll show you guys that too. Blink Kings are the mud tires you want to get. Um, they all they all showed a so showed a picture of a low C monster truck, but it got removed right away. Hasn't surfaced again. Who showed a picture of a low C monster truck? Did anybody screenshot it? Huh. I'm just seeing some of these comments. Bog Hog Kingsling bodies by J Concepts are cool. Yeah, but you can get any of those 80s truck bodies too and just stick it on there. Chevy. Um, yeah. But yeah, basically SMT10, slap on some uh, Fling Kings and call it good. All right, so I'm going to blow this up full screen. Kind of try and paint a little picture for you guys. What's going on here? Um, so we're standing kind of in the middle. You can't see anything around this hill. And behind this hill, they've also got debris, like Jeep parts or parts from side-by-sides to run into and roll over. So basically what you're trying to do is be the last man standing in some of these. In fact, in the 2.2 open, only one guy finished. Um, Either people rolled over or in the mud, you could burn up your motors, especially the, the uh, brushed motors. You know, you get the, it's like the silty mud, just clog those motors up. All right. So Sean's RC Adventure, there was a picture of the monster truck winner posted. Haha. <laughs> Trash Paul was like to be photobombed by the man, the myth, the legend, Greg Sopa. <laughs> Travis. It was hilarious. We both had on our axial masks, too. That was actually in the, the final event thing. I was trying to get a picture. Um, and I was standing behind kind of where the all of the Horizon people were doing the awards and all that. Yes, Tim, I need to beat Tony next year. Cody. <laughs> J.O. says, Exo brand face match would sell like crazy. I thought um, it would have been a cool thing to give away with uh, the, the grab bags at the beginning would be these. I bought it, and I also bought, like, their adventure thing stickers like they put on all the cars when you go through tech spec. I got a full-size one to put on my Jeep. Um but I've been wearing this here in D.C. The interview I've got to do tomorrow and all that. I've got to be masked up for all the setup and everything. All right. Boom. So, all right. So, you go around this back end. It's two laps. Can't hold my head up anymore. All right. See you, General Hobbies. Oh, Jesus says that they leaked it when they're 
website went up. Oh, interesting. Hey, Gavin, how's it going? JS Racing 804. Cody Vanderberg. Yes, I agree. The rock racing was way more fun than I anticipated as well. Um, the sun was brutal. Three hours in, in the sun racing. Um, all right, let's do it. Let's uh, let's get a little of this on. So I'm back here. I'm not in the very back, kind of mid-pack, but I kind of will. You see, I'll kind of hang out. Everybody goes around me. I'm still over here, kind of slowly coming around. And because the other thing is with these open wheel designs, you roll each other over pretty bad. Here you can see where you've got to kind of walk in this little box. My footage isn't going to be great because I'm more focused on racing at this moment. But one guy down already here. Uh, there I come. Back in the shot. They go all left and right. And once I get out front, that's when I know I can go kind of whatever speed I want to go. Um, this one's brushless. Not too worried about it in the mud. However, my transmission or diff something was clicking like crazy something is jacked i think it's diff the rear diff but it's it's making a horrendous noise especially powering through the mud um at this point it's also looking back and seeing where other people are and taking your time uh but so i already did one lap this is my second lap i just kind of have to make it at this point so avoiding the rocks and stuff that can turn you over, but pretty healthy lead at this point. And um, I think three people finished. Maybe more, but again, I once I had that lead, I just kind of coasted it. In, I did not have that luck in the 2.2. 2.2, I barely finished the... Um, Whoops. I barely finished the – or made it out of the qualifying. So there was two classes for both. So you had to do um, – you had to qualify, be in the top three to move to the main. And then they did a, basically out of those two classes, whoever didn't make it had another chance to make it. Um and they took three more people. So it was like nine people in each main event. Uh, and yeah, anyway, it turned out pretty awesome. Cody says he can see himself. Well, man, 6,800 KV motor. Yeah, the hard part is, though, the speed is definitely tricky here. You did not want to go fast because the angles and everything were so wicked. It doesn't show in the video, but the way they slide the hills as you're going, it was it was pretty treacherous course that they'd set up. It's really cool. Um, but I just, I wanted to hang out and be in my own spot, even in the 2.2. So that's how I did. I won the, um, the first round as well of this to get to the main. I took first in that, but it was, it's really just staying away from everybody else because everybody else is, gets into it with each other and end up on their lids. And with this one, I can't roll myself back out. But, um, yeah, there's my uh, bomber. You can see how much mud is caked onto it. Cause it's supposed to be black. And uh, it's not, not black there. Just solid mud. You can see the sticker under there. <laughs> but it got caked into that motor. And, and I basically, once it was done, I just put, hit the gas and shoved it, got the motor spinning, and then it was fine. But I'll have to motor clean that guy out big time. But I do love how this thing handled. I tried the same uh, hang back technique with this, in the, uh, and I barely made it through the qualifying because... I was just trying not to get in with people and I couldn't get around some of them. So basically they crashed out and I went around at that point, but I have lots of footage of this to, to edit together. Going to be some cool stuff. Um, you know, low angle 
But again, I have a bunch of footage that just is non-existent because I have all these broken files here that are 300. Whoop, that one kind of worked. Let's see if I can get that one to work or not. But they won't play at all. So these are decent length files, 500 megabytes. But the car just jacked them up. Which is a bummer as a talking shot. So I'd like to have that. So that one's getting worked on. Over here, I've got um, crawling stuff. My kids' Wraith 1.9s have to be color graded and all that. Um, it'll pop a lot more when it goes through the color process. But we shot everything log just to get the most um, dynamic range of light. So we'll have a lot of this to show. And some of it we can slow them out. Got stacks of it. It was just a really, really good event. This is a good shot of it coming down here. That axe system, I know that Harley doesn't like it, um, but it handled this so well for me. Um, I haven't used a really good one probably to compare it to. So just the way that it, the drag brake and everything worked was amazing. Just super smooth. Yeah, JMRC, same thing happened on the footage with you, uh, some of the shots. Like, I didn't get any of them crossing that bridge or that um, the float. There's a good shot of your truck, though. All that bridge stuff or the, the float got messed up. I didn't even realize it was happening until... Uh, later there's just some teaser of all this stuff through the woods all different kinds of terrain my favorite was the rocks though out out right behind me here in all this area is epic this is right after i lost the gopro and didn't realize it This stuff's been colored, so you can see the, the difference in some of this is a little bit more defined. Still needs a little bit of brightening and all that, but JMRC says he got it. That's awesome. Sean RC, it's the cheater system. Four two miles per hour for about three seconds, and it wasn't hot. Wow. But yeah, anyway, I got to get to some of this stuff, get in there and get editing. This is a pretty cool hill climb. And uh, a lot more angled than it looks, so it's easy to roll over here if you don't do it right. And you weren't allowed to touch this border. That was the other thing, so had to work your way around. Um. Sean knew that was coming. Yeah. It had power. And then having the two-speed in this, I know some people didn't want to do two-speed, but the two-speed was great. Um, there were some that really needed it. This is the cheetah rig. These things, my capper was absolutely amazing there as well. Uh, and it's just stock ready to run. But on 3S, it's such an amazing rig. Here's JMRC's doing some... Uh, trail work i think i start with a lot so that's the other one i was talking about the uh it's not the laser nut yeah because that's got solid axle but a little cool crawler set up over the tires the nitto so that's the update
on all of that stuff. Got a little show and shine. They had some cool rigs for Deadpool. Speaking of um, freestyles for Travis, talking about uh, Greg Sopa. That's my brand new SCX 10 taking a tumble. We start the video with all the big crashes. Ha <laughs> ha. Or was it? Uh, it was at the this pit thing here. There, that Deadpool SCX 103 is awesome. I actually had a head of Deadpool in it. It's super, super cool. But that was Greg Sopa's uh, SCX 103. He totally Deadpooled it out. Had like the nunchucks or whatever stuff in the back, the guns in the back window. Really cool. Tim, your vet, your spectrum green rugged was vibrating your hand, huh? Also, I, they were showing you how to do the swap out. I saw them uh, swap out a couple of those back plates. Um, it looks like it's actually a pretty easy thing for them to switch uh, if you send in your DX5 Rugged, the old one, to get the new plate put on. Yeah. JS Racing 804, probably going to switch to J-Concept wheels and tires. Hobbying brushless system for it. Just curious how it performs in our race season. What tires are you running right now? I love the J Concepts wheels and tires, though. The monster truck stuff is amazing. I just want them to come out with those 2.2s that have that Chevron pattern. All right, guys, I'm going to call it. It's been a uh, little, little over an hour, 20 minutes. Um, I have some work stuff that I have to play catch up on, and then I'm hoping to get closer to wrapping up the Axial Fest Day 2 video so that I can get on to Axial Fest Day 3, and then I'll probably do another one that's just the SCX24 course video all by itself because we have a bunch of cool footage from there. Um, interviewed... These guys, Brad and Andy, about the event. Um, so they're with Ryzen. So this one worked out. In fact, this is funny because they're talking and then they point out, uh-oh. Maybe it has some stuff going on. But it plays at least, and then they pointed out that their their buddy was stuck in the mud over there at the course, and they had to winch him out. But um, man, I got to get rid of those memory cards. I need to call Sony. It's, there's a recall. I'm supposed to send the, send new ones. Just really bummed that it happened on this event. Glad though that it happened before. This week, I, I'm shooting a high-profile thing tomorrow. And if that stuff was jacked up because of memory cards, I'd have been up a creek. So I'm glad that it happened, even though I'm pissed that it happened. All right, Tim, we'll see you. 11 Charlie RC, Sean's RC, Trail Critter RC, everybody. Uh, JS Racing at a 4 Gavin. RC Element, what's going on, man? I'm back from the Badlands. Yes, I am back from the uh, the Badlands. Epic. Definitely gonna try and go again next year. I love the the place that they held it. This um, the train is amazing. They've got all different types of train. Donner has pretty good train as well. Uh, looks more hilly, though, to get to different things there, where this was luckily pretty flat walking there, but then you had hills once you got to this area, uh, enough for the trucks to struggle, uh, but you didn't really have to put yourself out, like, hiking up a mountain. Um, plus, there's, like, a 1,000 acres, so we went 
four by four with the Jeep too, which is pretty cool. But if you're on the East Coast, I would definitely tell people try and get there next year. I'm gonna try and be there, and um, I might try and hit Donner too if they do it or, or Pro Line by the Fire or something. I had so much fun doing the crawling um, event that I'm gonna try and hit up another one or two to try out the one in Florida maybe. So we'll have a little bit of the um, the raw footage of the big truck as well. Oh, I'm getting tired. I'm going to get up early. So anyway, I'm going to call it, guys. Night, everybody.